Imagine being able to get to any operating system or utility to fix a PC without needing to create that pesky live CD or USB, or let alone try to find that thumb drive in a junk drawer. That's where netboot.xyz comes in, letting you PXE boot into various operating systems and utilities to check your system components like motherboard, CPU, or RAM. Or perhaps you have a hard drive that has a virus and you need to clean it, or you just want to go ahead and test drive a new operating system. Well, netboot.xyz will allow you to do those things, but it was originally intended to boot directly from a USB or ISO. But because it's an open source project, it continues to grow in the methods that allow PCs to boot from it. So today I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can install it on your Unraid server through Docker to self-host it on your own network. All right, guys, so let's get started. I'm running Unraid 6.12.13, and we are now on my main page. This is the most stable version of Unraid as of today. If you're seeing this in the future, you may have a different version, and that's okay. The install process will be very similar, so just follow me through this. Now, we're going to go ahead, and we want to install the Docker, but let's go ahead and look at my Dockers right now so that you could see that the uh, netboot.xyz docker is not currently installed so now let's go to apps now in the app section we're going to go ahead and search netboot.xyz and here it is guys now it's going to give you some warnings and the thing that you have to understand is that the netboot.xyz actually needs ports that are being used in Unraid natively. So what you have to do is give it its own IP address so that the ports don't conflict. Now you'll notice up here, I have 192.168.1.101 for my Unraid server slash apps because that's the page we're in on the Unraid server. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that we choose a different IP address so that we could use the same ports and this way it won't conflict with Unraid. We're going to hit un install right here. And now this is this is what it's telling you right here. You've got some uh, apps and ports that are going to conflict. So are you sure you want to proceed? We want to proceed. We know what we're doing. The other thing is that you get these three choices here. Now, I can't tell you that I understand 100% what these three choices are. All I know is that I'm using the top one. It says default and it says latest and that's good enough for me. So I'm going to click that. And here you go, netboot.xyz. Now we're going to make some changes and choices. So you'll notice here it says network type. We're going to go ahead and change network type to BR0 or bro, as I like to call it. And we're going to give this its IP address, a different IP address than anything else on your network, but within the range of your network. All right. So if you have a slash 24 like mine, 192.168. Dot one dot zero dot slash 24 you need to stay within this range but you also have to give it something different that's not being used by any other device or by unraid i already know what that ip address is and that's 192.168.1.107 now the way i was able to know that is when i go into my unify router right here as you see on the main page, I can look at all the devices and I can see right here all of the IP addresses that are being used. And I don't see 107 anywhere here. Go back and we're going to use 107. All right, we're going to leave that as bash. We're going to leave that off. We're going to leave the web UI port as 3000. We want port 69 for TFTP. That's fine. Port 8080 or slash 80 will be for this right here, the NGINX version 1.9.9. Okay. Uh, port range between 3000 and 30010. Uh, that looks right. Leave that alone. Now we're going to go port 80 and port 3000 at the bottom. So pretty much we're not changing anything else here besides giving it its IP address and putting custom for the network type. Now we're going to go ahead and hit apply. 
Okay, it looks like it has completed. We're gonna hit done. And now it says it's installed. As you see here, we have actions. We can go to the UI or we can go to edit. Now, we wanna go ahead and go to our Docker's page, scroll down, make sure that it's started and it hasn't crashed. Now we're gonna go ahead and click on it and we're gonna hit web UI. We wanna verify that it's using the IP address that we chose, that 107. We also wanna make sure that it's using the port 3000 and it is. Now, for some of you, you're gonna have this upgrade menus to latest button lit up saying that it needs to upgrade. Now this is the part that gets kind of funky. Most of you working with Unraid know that you should never update or upgrade anything in the web UI and you should do it from the Docker or edit Docker page. This is the one time I'm telling you it's okay to click update right here because all it's updating is the menus, the information of where all the different things are stored. So you're gonna go right here in the menus and look at all of this, right? Now here's the interesting thing is that you wanna make sure that you have boot, uh, right here, netboot.xyz.kpxe. When I was looking for information on how to do this with Unraid in my local network, everybody was telling me to use the .efi. For some reason, that just does not play nice within my network and I couldn't get some computers to boot off of it. So I started using the KPXE and it worked fine. For those of you who are smarter than I am and can explain the reasons why, please put it in the comments let me know. If you click on it, there's nothing to edit here, neither on EFI, so don't play with that. If you click on another one that uh, may, may have some editing capabilities, only change something if you know what you're doing. If you don't, stay out of it. Let's go ahead and go to local assets and here's all the different Linux versions and live disks and different tools that exist within netboot.xyz. This is why it makes it such a powerful tool. Now, we need to be able to explain from the computer that is looking for the netboot.xyz Docker how to get there you need to actually help them see each other. You gotta point them. So you need to go in your router. Now I'm using Unify or Ubiquity. So we're gonna go ahead and go into settings and then you're gonna go to networks. And I know, I know don't beat me up right now. I have everything under default and I'm changing that. As you see, I have different VLANs, but I'm gonna hit default right now. And that's where everything is working off of. Now I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down. And when you see DHCP service management, you're gonna go ahead and click that. And look at that, you've got Netboot. And if you put your little, little pointer over the I information little uh, button there, it tells you boot a device over the network by specifying its server IP address and file name so you got to choose that pxe file name and this is where you're going to put 192.168.1.107 and that file name netboot.xyz.kpxe now what's going to happen is your computer that you want to boot off of into that netboot xyz docker is is going to communicate with the router it's going to say hey i'm looking for a, a pxe uh, uh, host where is it and the router is gonna say, I know exactly where it is. It's at one last octet 107. And this is the file that you need. I'm gonna point you right at it. And now you get the handshake from the three devices, the host, which is the, the Docker on your Unraid server, either your, your, your router, which is pushing that information over to the PC, that's your third item that needs that information. So you have three points. Once you have this configured, it should work perfectly fine. Now, if you don't have a router that has this option, you will need one to make this happen. And there are other options out there that you can use over the internet as a router for that you can install in a PC. There's all kinds of ways of doing this, but right now, this is the option that I'm showing you. So I hope this helps somebody. This is the way I did it.